Delivery companies have seen parcel volumes more than double since the circuit breaker kicked in from April as more people worked from home. But couriers are struggling to keep up with the sudden surge in deliveries. Brandon Tanoto finds out what two firms are doing to manage this increased appetite as Singapore restarts. On the weekend that the circuit breaker was announced and implemented, the Monday when we got back to work, we were faced with double uh, to triple the volumes we were expecting. And that has carried on week on week for the last two and a half months. So in terms of sheer volume, we've uh, faced uh, a significant influx. Uh, we already at peak capacity, so we went out to recruit warehouse processing capacity and as well as additional delivery courier partners. We basically doubled our capacity within a two-week time span. From an operations perspective, you don't want to add capacity too quickly. You want to bring them on in a disciplined manner so that your quality doesn't dip too significantly in terms of uh, the customer experience. One of the pain points that we noticed customers had was certainty of delivery timings. The general amount of delivery shows about, I think, 9 a.m. to about 10 p.m. at night. We are working towards a solution which will allow the same notification service to be used to predict the time period where your career will arrive. And some of the challenges we face in Singapore, obviously, is we live in a very densely populated area. So even if the driver is around the neighborhood, he could have like 50 deliveries before he gets to yours. So we are using machine learning to work through this problem and hopefully we'll have a solution which is testable, which is deployable. In the past, as businesses are relying a lot on their own in-house fleet, it means that you have to purchase a vehicle and hire a headcount to be performing the delivery itself. We will be looking into all these different companies whereby they only need to pay for what they utilize. And this will essentially cut down a lot on their fixed costs. consumer electronics, um, so laptops, uh, monitors, we've seen a lot of furniture, so um, chairs, tables, gaming chairs in particular have been very popular. And the third portion is the kitchen accessories, so we see a lot of mixers, toasters, microwave ovens. So I mean, the natural conclusion from that is uh, Singaporeans are spending a lot more time at home. But the, the funniest item that I did see was um, a lot of mineral water. Top items that have been delivered are actually food and also healthcare items such as chicken essence and bird nests and also care pet essentials such as masks and hand sanitizer. So the more interesting items I would say will be users delivering exercise equipment to their friends so that they could actually perform workouts together at home. As we enter phase two and phase three, I believe that social distancing are still required in most of the eateries as there is also a limited amount of people that have been allowed into the eateries itself. So I foresee that the demand in food delivery side will continue to increase. The volumes of uh, e-commerce shopping will not fall uh, that quickly. I think we might see a dip once phase three hits. However, because Singaporeans have been exposed to this new mode of online shopping, and I feel a lot of retailers would uh, realize the value of an online component to their retail strategy. And for a closer look, we're joined by Prashant Dadlani, founder and CEO of Blue, and Li Qingming, co-chief operating officer of Pickup. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us this evening. Um, this is Dadlani and Mr. Li. Now, how have the frequency of delivery and types of goods delivered evolved since COVID-19? Prashant, why don't I start with you first? I think with the circuit breaker measures and uh, work from home policies, online retail has definitely surged with consumers now having to resort to e-commerce for purchasing items that previously they may have visited retail stores for. Aside from the obvious categories like groceries, 
everyday items like stationery, electronics accessories, beauty and personal care products are some examples. We're also seeing a surge in domestic shipments with cross-border shipping at some point on a temporary uh, pause owing to the situations in other countries and availability of capacity coming into Singapore. And Chibing? Mr. Lee, is that well, I, I think delivery volumes have definitely increased across the board, you know, with the stay-home measures and more people taking to online shopping. Um, Prashant has already mentioned some of the more common delivery items that we see. Um, something else interesting that we saw was we worked with a couple of educational institutions um, who were sending materials to their students because physical classes couldn't be held. And, you know, of course, the most obvious change would be um, the sharp upward trend, right, for groceries or, you know, food deliveries in general. Uh, Chimeng, delivery companies appear to be facing more demand than they can cope with, and new players then have emerged in the market. What preparations are companies like yours are taking to make sure that you can sort of stay ahead of the curve or stay on top of the game when shops and restaurants do reopen? I think with the e-commerce boom in the last few years in Singapore, it was always a very competitive market. Right? We see new players emerging in, in the market, but we also see existing ones exiting the market because their business operations were just no longer sustainable. Um, COVID-19 is a big shock to the system. Right? It has impacted um, every aspect of our everyday lives. So while we did see a huge surge in the demand for deliveries, I think supply-wise, it has also been well, um, quite well documented that this period has seen more people turning to um, parcel of food deliveries as, as a um, supplementary or additional income. So I, I would say that the impact of the imbalanced demand and supply situation perhaps has not been as drastic as, as it could have been. So the, the real challenge starts now as you know we, we exit the circuit breaker and, and people adapt and adjust to what is the new normal where um, supply of drivers or delivery um, agents could drop back to more normal pre-circuit breaker um, levels. So you know we companies will need to navigate these um, challenges to emerge at the top of the game. And, and other than you know the constantly striving to improve the product features. Um, to bring the best possible product to the market to differentiate ourselves so that um, you know, we can get um, a pie of the constraint of some, um, delivery um, agents. I think um, it's also about placing users' needs first. And users here refers to both our customers and, and the delivery agents on our platform uh, to listen to their feedback and be dynamic enough to um, respond or react to the changing demands and the changing market conditions that will ultimately allow a company like Pickup to stay on top of the game. Prashant, um, Blue, your company, it uses automated parcel lockers for delivery instead of contactless deliveries straight at homes. How competitive can this be then, you know, post-COVID-19? I think parcel lockers is definitely here to stay. And beyond that contactless delivery component, uh, there are many other benefits to using parcel lockers. For example, convenience, not having to wait at home for those packages, which is definitely going to not be the case uh, after the circuit breaker comes uh, eases. Privacy, parcels to your home could be received by other household members. Speed, it is much faster to deliver to a fixed network and hence you can get your orders and your purchases much quicker. Cost, it is also cheaper in being less resource intensive and less labor intensive and uh, consistency. And with that less manpower requirements, there's naturally less variability in that customer experience and that consistency in that delivery service level. And, uh, all these benefits really make our blue port parcel lockers uh, an attractive option for users. Okay, well, thank you both for sharing your thoughts with us this evening. Prashant Dadlani, founder and CEO of Blue, and Li Chi Meng, co-chief operating officer of Pickup.